Hi guys, welcome to Little Steps Facebook Live. I'm Natalie, super excited to have you again this week and being back uh, going weekly, which is great. So um, just so you know, we have really cool interviews to keep you in the know and on the go. And uh, if you wanted to uh, stay updated with all the events that we do in the Facebook Live, please go onto our Facebook um, account. Oh, we've got new audio today. I can hear, I can hear it's going well. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. Um, anyway, we're very excited with the new audio. But um, just to let you know, if you want to stay updated with the events um, and know what's going on every week, uh, please follow us on Facebook. We um, upload the events on there. You can click interested or going, and then you'll get live notification when we do go live. So we have amazing topics, really cool interviews. Um, so today we're doing education. Actually, next week we've also got a bit of an education um, a theme going on, so lots to uh, to kind of um, lined up to keep in um, in touch with. Um, also, just a little reminder: uh, please sign up for our weekly newsletters. They are packed full of stunning content uh, in all of our cities. Um, from an education perspective, actually, recently. We just launched our uh, schools, our latest schools uh, newsletter. It's a dedicated newsletter packed full of uh, all the latest school news, the open house roundups, uh, curriculum information, application deadlines, etc., etc. Um, and in the school arena, we also do a lot of uh, school videos. So um, another thing, follow our YouTube account. We get lots of daily uh, views of our videos. So we have great school videos, um, interviews with heads of school and teachers um, and also lots of open house promotions so those are really great ways to get in front of uh, all the right people and to actually get a feel for the school and the facilities and the campus so uh, great to keep in touch with uh, what open houses are available um, but anyway also to remember or to remind you that today um, we're live so ask questions at any time throughout the session and we'll answer them uh, make sure to send us some likes and uh, hearts if you can to let us know that you're enjoying it um, and when you're watching uh, any time later uh, during the week you're watching back you can still comment we'll always get back to you if you've got kind of burning questions so going on now I want to introduce you to our uh, um, our resident kind of uh, <laughs> school education uh, extraordinaire uh, this is Anne Murphy and she's a director at ITS Education Asia uh, we're like stoked to have you back so thank, thank you, you. <laughs> And we are going to be asking Anne to do a little introduction, even though we have had her many times, uh, just for those that are new, uh, to, for her to introduce herself and to introduce uh, a little bit more about ITS Education Asia. So if you can do that, that would be great. Sure. Thank you again for inviting me. Happy to be here. Uh, ITS Education Asia, we're actually celebrating this year our 10th anniversary. I can't believe in it. school placements. Yeah. yeah. And Congrats. the school's guidebook was in its 10th edition also. So wow. it's quite exciting for us to be celebrating that. Yeah, and that's a hard copy book that and you can get. E -version and it's also. got And you've got the e-version yes. and that gives you a list of and all the schools. You can download it onto any device. Um, easy one button, purchase it online and you Done. can download onto your and that's device. got everything you need to know Down in one schools. place. Yeah. yeah. So we cover schools around China, Hong Kong and Singapore. Divine. Okay, so our role really is um, originally um, ITS Education Asia was set up as a tutorial service yep. and it still is one of the, the most popular and um, I would say result oriented mm -hmm. tutorial school and in Hong Kong and we also do online learning for IGCSEs and A-levels and we offer education consultancy for families um, to help them navigate the school systems mm -hmm. in China, Singapore and Hong Kong. Cool. And today we're going to be picking Anne's brain on applications because it is now currently application season. Uh, so it's kind of our applications yeah. 101. It's a hot month. It is a hot month, September and actually a little bit of October. October. But September is like crazy month. So mm -hmm. lots to ask and uh, we'll be going through a couple of the um, areas that are really burning for us to understand. So uh, we'll be separating the session into three. Uh, we'll be covering understanding more about Hong Kong's application system. Uh, we'll be covering common myths and concerns in the process and also choosing the right school for your family. So lots of great areas. Let's get started on the kind of general overview on Hong Kong school application mm -hmm. system. Can you take us through the basics for the preschools, international schools and local schools? 
Sure, yeah. applications. Um, so applications do open in September for many, many schools. Yeah. Um, and applications open two years in advance, but usually okay. they close at the end of September right. or the end of October for preschool aged four year olds to five year olds. Okay. And for instance, ESF opened its applications in on the first of September for kindergarten and primary one. Oh, for kindergarten too. Two. Okay, yeah. I didn't mm-hmm. realize. So that. if you have um, a 2016 born child, you can apply for K1 entry for next year okay. for kindergarten. And there's various campuses around Hong Kong yes. for ESF kindergarten. And then for primary one, if for year one, uh, if your child was born in 2014, you apply between the 1st of September to the 30th of September. Okay. Um, ESF actually changed their policy this year. It used to be two separate applications. For the ESF in your catchment, yeah. so for instance, um, if you live in the catchment zone for Kennedy, you can apply just to Kennedy. Right. But if you live on Kowloon side or you live on Langtao Island, you can apply for two schools. So oh, you apply cool. for Kowloon Junior and you can apply for Na- Renaissance on okay. Langtao or on Kowloon side. And if you live on Langtao, you can apply for Discovery College and you know Kowloon Junior or for instance in Discovery Bay, you would apply for Bradbury because it's in your catchment. Oh, wow. But it's only one application this year. Oh, nice. Much easier. Yeah. Okay. And also the other policy is that ESF kindergarten children will be interviewed in the kindergarten. Oh, okay. So in the campus of where you would be attending. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that makes a big difference. It is a difference. Yeah. And so, you know, families who have their kids going to ESF kindergarten are getting that type of priority and special treatment, which is nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, So yeah, many schools, um, Canadian International School closes applications in October, Chinese International School, ISF Academy opened in August, closes the end of September, but then for upper grades they don't close until February. Okay. So it depends on what grade your child's going into, but usually for very small children, four-year-olds to five-year-olds, it stops in September and October. Okay. So it's good to keep an eye out on those dates. Okay. And don't complete the application form on the last day. Oh, really? (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure I've done that. <laughs> we have you. Because <laughs> we're so busy. <laughs> okay, cool. And you're frantic at quarter to 12 on my goodness. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be oh done. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. And it can actually, um, because some, it gets so overcrowded right. with the usage of their systems, it can actually shut down. Oh, uh, okay. And Canadian International so give School gives time. some extra lead way. Okay. Especially for um, applicants living here, applicants moving over. Oh, yes, They of give course. an extra week or so for okay. that. So that's very good. Um, so, yeah, just don't do it on the last day. Because oh, they're not so easy mean. applications, some of them, you know. No, I Hong know. Hong Kong International School also, for first round of offer, for interviews and to start in August 2019, their applications finish in October also. Oh, okay. So you've got a little bit more of yeah. the time. But they ha- they start from August to October. Well, you don't just have... No, like you have two years to apply. Oh, okay. I advance. see. But that's the end. That's the end. end. Yeah. Okay. And it's not first come, first serve. Oh, okay. So any time through that. As long as you get in them before the application date. Okay, cool. Um, did you have any top tips for parents when they're beginning the application program? Is it like really that scary? <laughs> it's not that scary. Some No, it's not really. But I think some of the applications do require you to complete parent statements and yes. essay type answers. So you do need to log on um, in advance. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can apply two years in advance for certain schools. Right. But you don't have to rush that because it's not first come first serve. Okay. So I'm not telling parents to leave it a week beforehand or you know even a month beforehand is okay. Okay. Um, or three or four months beforehand if you really know you want your child to go to that school take some time out set up the account online yeah and um, get familiar with the questions yeah do a few drafts um, because the mood you're in today and how you complete the question might so be a different true. mood you're in tomorrow. And then do your research on school. Always visit the school before you complete the application. Okay. You can't really talk about why your child fits into the school yeah. or why you do as a family if you've not seen the inside of the classrooms. Okay. Or you really don't understand their educational philosophy. Yeah. And this is what they're looking for in their answers, that you understand their education philosophy, their ethos, that the you know, the infrastructure of the school. Of course, the, the, for all comp- conventional reasons, you are going to choose certain schools. Yeah. But for other ways in your educational values, yeah. why it's a good fit. Because they do, I know, and they ask with regards to what can you contribute kind of as a family. Yeah. Also with like, if you're working parents or whatever, like what kind of things can you, like skills could you bring to the school? 
And Sorry, they do... we've got drilling outside, yeah. so uh, let us know if you're struggling with the with the audio. Sorry, Anne. That's just okay. Brrr. It's Hong Kong. So Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so they do ask a lot, so I think you're right. Take the time to really understand yeah, as a because family. Because they do, are genuinely very interested in every child and a family as much as they can be. Right. They can't accept everyone that applies. No. But, you know, uh, that's what I mean. You just have to take time. Okay. You know? Give yourself that give, time. Give yourself the chance, give your child the chance. Yeah. Yeah. True. And then for starting the process, uh, do you recommend how many schools typically a family should apply for? Well, it depends. If you're going down the bilingual pathway, right? Uh, you've already put your child into a specific kindergarten. Right. For instance, if, you're not, if your child is not at Victoria Kindergarten, you can't apply to VSA. Oh, okay. okay. Right. So if your child's at ISF preschool, then of course you're going to apply to ISF Academy. Right. Um, if there's a child at St. Catharines, you will have top local schools in mind and maybe also bilingual. Okay. But every family has to have a backup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah. I've seen many families down through the years and their children have been in specific bilingual kindergartens. Right. But they, the child doesn't make it into the through train bilingual okay. school. So you have to have that. So backup. no, a couple of so, other options. So, you know, yeah. if you're top three bilingual schools, say Singapore International School or ISF, Victoria, or maybe Yeo Chung, whatever those schools may be, and you have them in mind, of course, you're going to apply to those, but then uh, an international school. And yeah. think about also choosing one that has a strong Chinese program. Okay. So you can't, you're not leaving the, oh, all of the idea of your child having a good Chinese bilingual, bilingual, bilingual yeah. Yeah, education behind. Okay. Yeah. So at least have a backup in the, uh, and also yeah. sometimes when you are doing the application process for the kindergarten to kind of think about that yeah. forward. And like, to, when you do look at kindergartens, you know, find out where those children are attending. Where school. they're going yeah, on to. Okay. where they went on to. And is that the same path you want? Is that the want? same path you want, exactly. Okay. Um, and then I was also going to ask, um, how about applications from afar? So for those that you mentioned earlier about applying outside of Hong Kong, are there any specific recommendations there for There are many schools in Hong Kong who keep certain spaces over for overseas applicants. Okay, okay. cool. And you, know, you might not have met the deadline, and they do have... Um, it's from school to school. Yeah. It's who you speak with. It depends on their, you know, the application of the family. It depends on the school they're coming from. Right. Um, it varies from school to school. But in general, every school in Hong Kong try their best to accommodate overseas families. Okay. Okay. And um, if you're moving in January, of course, you know, it's tough because you have to pack up house and it's Christmas time and everything. Mm. So usually schools would let you know November, early December. Okay. Um, but if you are moving to Hong Kong, it's best to start the process now. Okay. Um, and then come and look, see, do a look, see visit. Yes, come visit come to like a recce. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, you know, admissions officers, um, they try their managers, shouldn't call them officers, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, try their very best to help accommodate those. Because yeah. especially some countries have the school system from January to December, so mm. they would naturally leave their country, but yeah. then our school system majority is like mm. August to August. Yeah. So that also But if you're coming affect. from Australia or New Zealand, yeah. it works perfectly. Australian yeah. school works that way, so yeah. it's good. Then and you they give priority to these passport to holders. To the passport holders. Oh, yeah. so going to get on to that question too. Cool. Thank okay. you very much. So we've just been chatting with Anne from ITS Education Asia and uh, learning a bit more about kind of Hong Kong application system. Um, I just wanted to let you remind you that you can uh, ask any questions at any time. We'll make sure to answer them while we're with Anne here now. And you can always go back to cover um, some of the areas. So we're going to now move on to kind of the common myths and concerns mm -hmm. uh, around the whole application process because there are a few. Um, with regard to the deadlines, um, should parents really apply as soon as they receive a birth certificate? You can. <laughs> Yes, you can, for certain schools. I see the pregnant ones are like on it already, you know? Not before you receive the birth certificate. No, I'm joking. That's, no, you cannot apply to any school unless you have a birth certificate. Okay. And you can apply quite when early. you have the birth certificate because schools, um, for instance, French International School, German Swiss, um, Kellett School, yeah. Discovery Bay International School, and specific playgroups, right. Art Plus, Victoria, they will, um, Pebbles, that is run by St. Catharines, they will accept applications once your child you know, has a birth certificate, wow. and the sooner you apply, 
the sooner you get on the wait list, the higher chance you've been called for an interview, the higher chance you've been mm. offered a place. When you, if you apply after the birth certificate, do they only As in the call pilot. you? So if you have the birth certificate and you're applying for a primary school mm-hmm. place at four, for at instance, like four, when yeah. would you get called up for an interview? Um, for instance, obviously uh, not at six months. But yeah, <laughs> around December they will check with you to see if the de- December the the year before, before your child. Okay. So it's, let's say this year, December 2018, yeah. they will check with family. Say, are you still interested in right. sending your child to our school for reception? Please right. send us updated reports and please get this teacher recommendation letter completed. Right, from the preschool This is just a whatever. scenario, so okay. schools ask for this. And then come January or February, they will bring in a, a pool of students to interview oh, okay. and to meet. Okay. And then they'll offer February, March, the place. Oh. And can you, so if I was to apply to one of those schools, not like much later, because I still really want to go to them, but mm-hmm. I haven't been in Hong Kong mm-hmm. um, since my child was born, I just get further down the waiting list when I apply. Depends on how many children are in your family. You could have a younger one and the younger child will get in and then the older sibling will get in because well, it's a sibling priority. Okay. So you apply for all children. Okay. So that could happen if that's the case of a family. Um, you know, if you apply to a school and you don't get in at reception, you might very well get in at year two, year one, year two. Okay. I mean, it's Hong Kong. Families move in, move out. There's always a, yeah, 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 okay. Um, does it matter if I apply at the beginning of the month or, as we spoke earlier, on the deadline date of Don't application? Don't apply on the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. any time through, as we said yes. before, we touched on just kind of giving yourself that time to be able to review yeah, what the course, information yeah. they will need. And be happy with the application you submitted. Yeah. And as I said, and you're giving those questions valuable time. Yeah. It is quite nerve-wracking, actually, because you feel like it's like a little bit of personal... I think it can be if you're applying to four or five different schools and you yeah. don't understand the process. It can be hard for parents yeah. and not understanding exactly what schools are asking for in the question. Yes, you know? yes. Um, but I think if you give yourself time and you've decided on the schools and you understand them very well, you've done your research, then it's, it's easier. much easier. Yeah. But I'm not saying recommending any family to apply to eight and ten schools. No. Before you know it, you spend twenty thousand. I was going to say, dollars. firstly, it's quite expensive process, yeah. but then there's a lot of all the admin. So be and selective. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do your homework. You know, be realistic. Yeah. Because there's some schools where uh, you don't, you might not even get an interview. You know, your child might yeah. not even get the chance. Yeah. So be realistic. Okay. Because every school is a priority system. Okay. And they're honest about it as well on their website. Yeah. So as long as you understand their priority system take the chance if you want to but um yeah I'm not, just don't apply yeah. to so six, many seven yeah. okay that's good advice and then some common myths um and concerns in the application actual process so obviously we know that every school is different but what is a typical application process look like in hong kong they vary from school to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, the questions vary. Okay. The parent questions, the essay type answer questions that you have to answer. Uh, there, you know, every you have to put in your personal details, of course, your address, your occupation, yeah. uh, child's date of birth. You have to submit supporting documents. I think what varies. Um, they all want to know about your child. Right. So of course they say, tell us something more about your child. That can be the same for every school okay. because your child is your child at yeah. the end of the day um, but the education philosophy that you're going to talk about and how you you know you you understand this and it matches with your own education philosophy will be different for the schools okay you yeah know? so you and tailor. you know the curriculum choice that you've made that's a big one that's a big one because you have to understand the curriculum that you've chosen yeah and but i always say for younger children it's really not the curriculum makes the difference no it's the school it's the school yeah but it's understanding the, teachers, the longer the term i suppose the longer yeah. term, uh, where it would lead you if you decide you're leaving hong kong yeah. for instance or you know you're moving to the australian curriculum and you think oh can i can she start off in the british can she start off in the ib can she start off in the american understanding all affect? of that yeah yeah okay um and then any school offer priority for the specific passport holders that we yes, kind of do. mentioned um, before. as i said earlier australian passport or australian school does for the australian and new zealand passport holders german swiss international school okay and um French? French in the French section. Yeah, the French stream. French stream. Right. Um, any British schools? No. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, American? No. 
interesting. Okay. Um, and then I was. But there's ask, a lot of children going to these schools that have British that passports. That are in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or American passports. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you explain what uh, waitlisted means for a place? Okay, so you're, when you submit an application, you're on their wait list for right. an interview, first okay. step. Second step, your child goes for the interview, they pass the entry requirements, right? and then they could still be waitlisted. You might not get an offer automatically. Oh, okay. And that comes down to the school's priority. Okay. So they would have a Canadian international school, sorry, they give... Um, passport. Oh, okay. Yes, yes Canadian. Canadian passport yep, yep. holders. And they give sibling priority and the venture priority. So every school uh, has certain priority. Okay. So your child might be up against kids with this priority. Okay. Okay. So they've passed. And then if yes. they say you've been waitlisted, then the you time could, could just be... You get a spot between March or August before the school starts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. But some schools don't allow you to start after, say, September or October. Okay. They don't allow January entry, the second semester entry. Okay. And you have to, the application, you have to reapply, roll it over to the next year. So that could be quite hard then when you're applying to like maybe two or three schools mm. and you're waitlisted on maybe your priority school for you. And then yeah. you kind of, other school is offered a position, then you've got to, do you mm. play that card and wait it out? That's the hard. To. But I yeah. think also schools have to be very fair to their existing families yeah. and give the siblings that priority. You know, if you go to North Anglia Kindergarten, yeah. I mean, of course, you're going to want to go all the way through. Yeah, no, that's and you're the going big to want to guarantee yeah. that year one place. Yeah. So they can't, you know, guarantee everyone a place. All schools can't guarantee that. They just yeah. don't have. I mean, supply does not meet demand, unfortunately. Yeah. But then we've had quite a lot of new schools that have come. Yes. So it's starting to get a bit more. It's so Campuses excited. Yeah. Amazing. amazing facilities. Mm. Yeah. Uh, amazing programs so it's and there's nice. new schools coming in again yeah oh. so this is really cool yeah okay cool yeah there's um, two more new schools coming in 2019 and 2020 so good for parents yeah. are we allowed to say who no <laughs> <laughs> okay when we turn off I'll the let camera. you know yeah. <laughs> when I get the go ahead that's inside track um, well, one that was on the newspaper <laughs> yesterday so oh oh I need to go back on and read I haven't got on check our website yet. okay <laughs> Um, so uh, we've just been covering some of the common kind of myths and concerns around the application process. We also uh, began the section uh, really understanding the whole application process. And we're just going to kind of finish off around uh, choosing the right school for, for a family. So mm -hmm. we've kind of covered certain elements as we've gone through. But I suppose what are the key things that parents should uh, discuss with their family when they are considering to apply for schools in Hong Kong? There are so many different schools here, and every one of them offers something special totally, and unique. Yeah. And what suits one child may not particularly suit another. Or yeah. suit. You've also got to think about it as it's a family unit. It's yeah. not just your child's going to the school, it's also it's going so to be true. you. And do you feel welcomed into the community? Is it a community that you will want to be part of? Yeah. Because you just don't want to just wave goodbye to your child on the school bus or drop them off and say, okay, you're on your own now, and that's yeah. the way it's going to be for a few years because you're never going to see me in the school again, a part of it, you know? Yeah. And schools want families to be part I of know, their community, yeah. and that's it's what so builds important. the spirit in the school. Yeah. And that's really important to bring, builds up the vibe, it builds the community, it makes newcomers feel welcome. Yeah. Uh, so th that's something you've really got to look at. Yeah. As I said, I, I go on this, that's me as a teacher, I think, I don't think you should think so much about the curriculum in your child's four so or five. Young. So young. Yeah. It really is down to the teachers, teacher-student ratio, um, you know, what exciting languages they might learn so young, yeah. or, you know, does the school have innovative teaching approaches? Yeah, some specialist kind of science areas. science programs, yeah. are they building robots? Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of schools that are introducing STEAM programs. I know, so this very is exciting. a big hot topic. They have maker spaces. I know. Um, they have marine labs like they do at the Harbour School. Yeah. All of these different facilities, the infrastructure, the new subjects they can learn. You know, these schools are thinking forward for the yeah, future. they are. And it's there exciting. are college courses now that our children will will be doing yeah. that, that don't even exist. Yeah. And that's what these schools are preparing these kids for, for the future. It is very cool. So that's something to look at, yeah. you know? And is it worth the money? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just not go on the money. <laughs> the money it's expensive. Hong it Kong is expensive, is. Let's So be we have to forget about the money at some stage, I think, yeah. really, because it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, 
it's understanding, I think, what really the school offers that's unique and different and the collaborations they might with have for their dance programs or their STEAM yeah. programs. I think like it would be quite nice for when you're applying to actually have time with some of the parents in the community. Because like, yeah. when I went to visit like the Norwegian International School, mm-hmm most of their families actually stay after school in their facilities and do play dates and the parents all chat and there's like an amazing yeah. community and you, you won't always see that when you go visit the school, no. understand it. I see it sometimes when I walk around, go on school visits, I yeah. see that there's parents coming in, they're involved in and they some really, event. Yeah, and yeah, the kids kind nice. of stay on and have all these extra yeah. play dates. I think they sometimes have to say, listen, uh, we need to close go the ahead. gates now, can you guys go mm-hmm. home? But I think it's important for parents when you are applying and yeah. like looking to and try and understand more about that actual community yeah. that exists because mm. some cool. parents don't want their kids so young to go to big big schools no you know? and big campuses yeah. overbearing or whatever yeah. a little bit they intimidating might look at smaller learning smaller community schools yeah yeah oh, cool. which still exist in hong kong which they is are really nice. there's still yeah. some really great yeah, yeah smaller campus related um, schools um so how can parents choose between the choices of school that they are offered i mean this is a tough one because as we were saying, you've kind of applied maybe to three or four schools. Yeah. Then maybe you get you get your offer and you have to put a deposit down. Yeah. And, then the, and choosing between and maybe you get two offer offers. comes through in yeah. a few weeks and yes. then you have to think about the other all deposit. slightly different dates. And you've so lost you the previous deposit. <laughs> that happens all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's just go with your gut. Go with your gut, and I think maybe if you need to visit again or you want to meet with um, the principal there or the admissions director. Or you want to go on another school visit? Yeah, maybe take your child the next time. Oh yeah, make them part point. of yeah. that decision. Yeah, and um, show them the websites. Talk to them about the school. Again, take them to you know it might be a family Christmas fair. You you know yeah, there could be lots them. of events going on, but get them involved in the decision maybe beforehand. Yeah, you know we've actually done some really cool uh, videos with the schools, actually little steps videos that we've done. And that's I, I know that that's our kind of angle on the video is we would like the parents to get all the information that they need. But at the same time, I want to show that video to my co- yeah. child because they normally like, oh, that's so cool. Like they're playing archery or something like random that like stands exactly. out for them. Exactly, there could be to something there. Oh, I want to do, feel, that. You know? I wanna do yeah. that, I want to do yeah. that, do that there. Yeah, get them excited. And they get excited yeah. to see the other kids. Yeah and stuff like that what's going on I always say that when it comes to the school interviews um, parents have said to me oh he he didn't do very well he wasn't very happy in that environment or he did exceptionally well and he came out laughing and he was really happy and I said well you've got to go Go with with their feeling yeah. You know, because children are smart. They yeah. know what they want. Their inner feelings are important. Yeah. And they can sense things. Yeah. Right? It's so true. So, so true. You've got to listen to so them. So, yes. Too. Yeah. Don't get carried away with all the other riffraff. Yeah. Actually, just stop and, Think and see how child. they've come out of the situation. Yeah. Um, is there a right personality for certain schools? I mean, like, like a family personality that's... Uh, I think it's... You're putting your child into a box at four or five, really, aren't you, when you think about their personality and the yeah. interviews they have to go through, and uh, they change. I know. So that's another big thing And a school can change a child. Yeah. Right? And so that's another thing, is sometimes actually the application process for um, children that actually need to move. So they've kind of, it's been the perfect school for the first few years, mm-hmm. and then the child's really developed in a certain Absolutely. area. And then you kind and of happened. want to start that application process. And you know, if process. we were all in our home countries, your child would go to the same primary school and then move on to the yes. secondary school. Um, but we're not, and we're here. And so it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that if you put your child somewhere at four or five or six, that it's they have to graduate from that school. No, you, you can. You might be leaving, or you move because yeah. they've, you know, Sometimes they've realised that they've got a, you know, that they've got a flair for art, yeah, or a drama, or you know, they're wonderful rugby players, and you go yeah. for the strongest rugby team. Exactly, you know? I've had a lot Not of parents like that. Not every child's an academic. Yeah, and then um, Not for that, for academics, for uh, I'm not, but uh, I'll go with the drama. But um, <laughs> <laughs> how's the application process for that situation? So is that rolling if? if it's an older student, so if you're already at an existing school and you see that it's a strong drama program and you really want to develop that with your child, you would reapply and still in that application process. You apply again. Okay, so when And then you go through the interview assessment. Okay. And as kids get older, of course, it becomes then that it's written assessments and testing, online testing. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, 
I was going to ask what else is um, kind of what help is available for children um, that have learning delays or that have been kind of diagnosed mm-hmm. with uh, learning disabilities or anything. Uh, is there ways in helping with choosing the right school for that, like the kind of process on that? Yeah, and there are front. some schools here where they are inclusion schools. Yeah. Um, and there are other schools that are highly selective. Okay. So you have to look for the schools where you know your child's going to get that support if yes, they need it. Yes, that's the thing, yeah. Uh, and that's very important. Okay. And there are quite a few schools in Hong Kong that will have support, support for children who have additional learning needs. Okay, cool. Um, so we've covered three amazing uh, areas within the application process in Hong Kong, so just understanding a bit more about it, uh, tackling some of the common myths and concerns, um, and also just like good tips really for uh, families when making that choice of um, applying and how to apply for the different schools, because we have and are lucky to have a great selection of schools within Hong Kong. Um, so you can go back at any time through the video to look at any of the areas that we've covered with Anne. Uh, she's joined us from ITS Education Asia and um, she's always our kind of go-to for uh, tackling a lot of our school related topics so we're very grateful to have her here with us again today. Um, in summary, I just kind of before we head off or to check if there's been any questions, do you see any additional trends happening within Hong Kong around the application process? Any kind of changes or trends that might be I coming? I think hard copy is out the window. A lot oh, okay. Of it's online now. It's all that online. Yeah, so yeah. it's easier. Yeah, great. We're all online. We, you we can see actually sit positive. on the MTR and do it on your phone. Yeah. I'm joking. Oh, Don't do great. that. No. <laughs> we look at inspiration whilst <laughs> around the mock-up. public. Yeah. A mock-up application Just say, <laughs> Don't submit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and are there any key no-nos when applying to schools in Hong Kong? Just be careful of the application date, as I said, and don't okay. apply. If the school have a deadline when you're so supposed to submit hard copies oh, right. of your supporting documents, yes. which would be Once application, you've done which would be your passport, your birth certificate, birth certificate re- yeah. passport reports, then meet that deadline. Okay. If they ask for it to be registered mail, make sure it's registered mail. So okay. stick to the rules okay. of what the school wants. Good if advice. they say they prefer so e-copy of the application, do an e-copy of the application. Okay, don't try and be If you can creative. only pay online, pay online. Now some schools, um, their online system at the time when you're trying to pay, it might crash or, right. you know, HSBC might not accept, or whatever the reason is, they will accept a check for that reason. Oh, okay, fine. You would just contact yeah. them and say, I've had a difficulty, mm-hmm. I'm going to drop off a check. Yeah. Okay. And just be aware of the emails coming through of being offered a date for an interview. Right. And ensuring that you reply and saying, yes, accept we that. Accept. Okay. Yes. And then. Um, but and don't then have three or four interviews in a week. Yeah, that's no a little bit intimidating for the child. Yeah, yeah. no one wants that. But um, As make sure you will accept the interview date before their actual deadline of that. Acceptance. Of the acceptance, mm-hmm. okay. So apply, like, you know, confirm by the state so to make sure you yeah. do that. Because I, I think as much as you try as a parent to stay relaxed, like, you still feel like you're being judged a little bit as a family. So you, the kids do, like, feed off a bit of the nerves yeah. when you go in. And that's in. not fair. Yeah, yeah. so Children I don't think you don't need to go nervous. and have hundreds of interviews all in one day. No. Um, okay, cool. Just wondered if there's been any questions that have come through? From anybody? It doesn't look like we have any now, but I think there will be some coming in. So cool. maybe if Anne could just stay tuned and answer sure. some comments. Sure, as okay. always. So we will answer any questions at any time. So feel free um, if you're watching this later on in the week and didn't catch it live right now. Um, so thanks very much. Thanks, Anne, again. Thank you very it's much for great. inviting me. Yeah, we love having you here. Thank you. Um, just to kind of remind you guys that uh, we do go live every week. We actually are supposed to be going live on Monday here in Hong Kong again um, talking another education topic which um, we're very excited about which is kind of inclusion mm-hmm. um, and what this means within the education system so we'll be doing that with the Harbour School um, we're scheduled to have that on Monday however oh. as everybody has heard <laughs> we have super typhoon <laughs> coming through this weekend you might so not be here at all <laughs> that might not be happening Hong Kong so <laughs> we will um, uh, keep you posted um, we will get the event up on Facebook so make sure to just um, say that you're going or that you're interested so that you can get 
the update because we'll make a call on Sunday when Super Typhoon comes through just to let you know how, if it is going to affect um, going live on Monday. And it might be that we do it later in the week or possibly um, the following Monday. So um, it's just, you know, sometimes even though we are digital, uh, we still can get affected by um, the wonders of the weather. So um, make sure to kind of follow us and we'll keep you updated. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been great. So thank you guys so much for today and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Bye-bye.